angel said, He isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee. Welcome to this service of worship. We are glad that you're with us. We do have some community notes that you'll find at the end of the video, but in this moment, let us further prepare for worship, making use of the questions that are before you. What does it mean to you that God trusts you? Are you a trustworthy person? Easter represents God's faith that we can be saved as a humanity. Do you share that faith? What does Easter mean to you? So we sometimes forget too easily what the resurrection means for us, and really for all of us. It's just wrong. It's important for us to be sober about our shortcomings so that we can better hear what God has to say to us. And so let us begin with silent prayer.
risen Christ, we rise with you, not because of our courage, but because of yours, not because of our hopes, but because of yours, not because we loved you, but because you loved us first. And after everything, after giving us your life, you yet provide to us your own spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And may we show our gratitude by living the way you've empowered us to. Thank you for seeing us in a thank you for seeing in us a people worth saving. Help us see what you do. Great God. Gratefully we pray this. Thank you for listening, God. Amen. If you have little ones in the home, um, then you'll want to prepare by getting a photo album or a digital um, photo frame, picture frame, um, to use with this children's sermon. If you don't, um, please be feel free to skip ahead to the sermon. The time, um, the times are listed um, below um, with the YouTube video. But be sure to wait for answers. So showing the album or the frame, do you know what this is? <laughs> well, it's a photo album. And what does it hold? What does it contain? Yes, it contains pictures. It holds pictures, lots and lots of pictures. Now, what are they pictures of? What are these pictures about? What's the story behind? these photos and why do we keep these pictures it all happened in the past so why do we need these pictures now we keep pictures to remember remembering is a really important part of life remembering helps us feel Remembering helps us know how to do things. Remembering helps us to get back home, to tie our shoes, to know our names. Remembering helps us to know that we are loved. Well, our faith works the same way. That's why God wants us to have pictures of our faith. But these pictures are often made with words. They are made with stories. They are made when we tell each other about what God has done for us. And so our faith pictures help us with remembering God. Remembering helps us to feel God. Remembering helps us know how to do things with God, like pray. Remembering helps us to get back home, to tie our shoes, to know our names before God. Remembering helps us know we are loved by God. So when you are around the people who care about you, ask them about all the ways they share memories with other people and don't forget to pray with each other you know one of the hazards of preaching for a long time or really just being a Christian for a long time is Running into hyper familiar stories. I mean, how many times can you tell the same story over and over and over again? I mean, we know it already. Move on. Come up with something, I don't know, original at least. Give me a break. But I remember well several years ago, the theologian Joe Covington sharing with me sometimes life makes you come at scripture like it's a whole new Bible. We enter into times of triumph or crisis or confusion or discernment and find ourselves pouring over these stories, looking for familiar footing, a grounding of our hearts and minds, an anchor, if you will, to help make sense of the storm's chaos. But part of what makes repetition important is that our memories can be faulty. Now, don't get me wrong, we, we can certainly remember well how, we, how something made us feel, but sometimes the details can elude us. And as the character Jack Reacher likes to say, 
Details matter. I'll never forget how very much smug I felt sitting in class being asked to write um, write down what I remember about the Tower of Babel story. And I was so sure of what I knew, but I really wasn't prepared for the truth. I got a lot of details wrong. And, and some of the details I remember weren't even part of the story. And, and coming back and actually reading the story again, it really was new. It wasn't just a reminder. It, it, it pushed me to reframe my thinking. You know, if you're like me, okay, you like to drive too fast. And, and with that comes a likelihood, a higher likelihood, that a trooper might issue you a ticket. So when this happened to me, I was given the opportunity to take a driver's course to mitigate the ticket being on my record. And I took it, of course, thinking, I mean, what else can I learn? It's not like the road signs changed or the need for seat belts were different. Um, so, you know, why not? I'll take this class, get out of my ticket, whatever. Probably just going to be a waste of time. And yet, because of my real world, real, sorry, real world experience driving, all the familiar events and familiar elements of the class suddenly felt new. Like I was learning some of these guidelines and tips for the first time. It was well worth reading the manual again. My suspicion is that we were built this way. Our brains hold on to so much, um, but only so much. And yet we, well, yet we are built to build on the experiences that we have, to, to make what we remember even more powerful than if it was simply stuck in our heads all the time. We appreciate more. We take less for granted, hopefully. We live differently, or at least more mindfully. We relive those moments. Um, we relive those moments to reconnect with lessons that we allowed to become mundane, experiences that we let fade into routine. And like furniture in a house that we fail to attend, our mental households collect dust and suffer malaise. And I think this is what can happen with Easter. I think this can happen with the resurrection. I think this can happen with our faith. We grow up with it. We, we've gone through the routines. We've done what we were taught. But the difference our faith was supposed to make can get lost to us. This is Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. The resurrection. Listen for the word of God to us all. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stones rolled away from the tomb. When they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces to the, toward the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the human one must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the, to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb. He bent over to look inside. He saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is what was happening with the women, at least I believe. I mean, even though clearly Jesus had laid out to them previously, laid all of this out to them previously, um, their hearts and minds had trouble absorbing the good news, the joy right in front of them. But ironically, because Jesus had told them, because they had their memories to access, the men were able to say to them, remember, you see, verse 8 then 
becomes a turning point for them and is a turning point for us. You see, no matter how many times we read and hear the Christmas story, the Easter story, the miracle stories, the walking on water stories, the, the turning over the table story, the storm calming stories, the feeding stories, the leadership challenging stories, the healing stories, the baptism story, the resurrection story. Every time is an opportunity to renew. Every time is an opportunity to recapture or regain that sense of strength or joy or hope or healing. In the end, we don't have to explain it. We just want to reconnect with it. We don't just want to relive our faith. We want to live here and now. And our memories are the key. I remember very well um, how smart and sharp-witted my grandmother was. Uh, many years before she died, she suffered debilitating dementia. And she forgot names and places. She lost track of time and events. She mixed up things that she read in the paper with things that happened in our family. But I remember visiting her one day and, and greeting her. She said, well, how are you doing? And I responded with words that she taught me. Fine as silk. She smiled. I mean, for all that she forgot, being reminded of her own catchphrase was enough to, to bridge years of loss into a moment of joy, however fleeting. And there were many moments like that. They, and they were, they were the one true gift in the midst of a terrible disease. And I think, y'all, that that's why our memories are so important. I think that's why the, our session minutes in the Presbyterian Women's History books and the bulletin archives are important. I think that's why the historical room is important. I think that's why our place is important. I think that's why we are important. The key to understanding the resurrection is remembering the faith that Jesus put before us. Remembering will make it possible for us to find home. Remembering will make it possible for us to be healed. Remembering will make it possible for us to love and to be loved. Remembering the resurrection will help us to know that after everything, God chose us. That we were worth saving. And we owe it to ourselves to remember that always. For Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
So again, God chooses to love us abundantly. We should respond by choosing to be loving abundantly. This is why we should give and share what we have and who we are. So let us together pray and reflect on what has been given. Let there be no doubt, great God, you love us and we are grateful. Let there be no doubt, great God, we should be loving in turn. As we receive the gifts you provide, may the gifts we are meant to be emerge. In the great name of Jesus Christ, we pray this together. Amen. As we pray together, there will be an opportunity for you to lift up your personal prayers. This moment will be very obvious. And when it comes, we hope you'll take advantage of it. Um, if you need more time, pause the video if you need to. But in this way, we will share the prayers of the people together. The Lord be with you and also with you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in Lord God, by your will, Christ is risen. We celebrate this today, but really, we should be celebrating this every day. Your mercies do not end. Your courage has no bounds, and your faith in us defies explanation. But with these divine gifts, please hear us say thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the life he led. Thank you for the lessons he taught. Thank you for the power he displayed. Thank you for the compassion he demonstrated. Thank you for the faith he authors and inspires. Thank you for raising Jesus. And great God, thank you for raising us. In this way, let us be godly people. Let us make a habit of compassion and consolation. Let us make second nature your grace and mercy and sense of justice. Let us set aside safety and embrace risk-taking with you. May your healing balm reach through us to those around us, especially those on our prayer lists and those we will come to know. Help us love and give love. Help us value mercy as you do, despite our collective answer of violence, of disdain, of division, of cynicism to your love. May we truly be washed by you and embrace hope instead. For this reason, O oh God, we come at your invitation, and we lift up to you now our personal prayers. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for transforming us. Thank you for teaching us even how to pray when words fail us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So on this occasion of Easter, let us together say our benediction. It's hard to overstate how important real devotion is to our faith. The key to understanding the resurrection is remembering the faith Jesus put before us. Get up, take heart, Jesus is still calling you, 
And as you go, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds this Easter and forevermore. Amen. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. As we mentioned, we do have some community notes that we hope that you'll um, bear in mind as you move through the week. Um, begin with the idea, um, like you were there. One of the most powerful legacies of our faith tradition is storytelling. Taking the memories and dreams of the faithful that have come before us, even our own experiences, and reliving them through sharing them with others. It's not just a good practice for our marriages, for friends or for families. It's good for any community. Take time to relive and remind and remember. Take stories that are important, important to you and make sure the children in your life know about them. Take time to remind yourself why your faith is important to your life. Now, our study with the Follow Me curriculum series from the denomination as we move through the Easter season centers on the theme, Sing a New Song. The study offers the opportunity to think about music in the life of faith and the power of music affords us for sharing what can't always be put into words. As we move through the study, please share with the Spiritual Life Committee your favorite hymns and why they're your favorite. The study materials are available from our website, Facebook page, and from the church office. Opportunities to join with others in the study do happen on Monday nights, as well as on Sunday mornings for children and youth. Contact the church office or Mandy Ely, our Christian Education Director, for more information. In the last few years, we have had six to nine college students each year in schools in North Carolina, in Virginia, and in Tennessee. And each month, from September to May, these students receive a greeting card and a small remembrance from the Presbyterian women. The gifts are usually gift cards from popular restaurants, but have included bookmarks, key rings, stickers, tickets to the Enchanted Forest, um, inspirational card coasters even. These are all our way of reminding the students that we love them and we are interested in their progress and that we hope they're doing well. So if you're interested in helping with this ministry, please do make your contributions online, in person, or by mail to the Hawfields Presbyterian Women with College Fund and the memo. And thanks. Now, the Sunday following Easter, we will be celebrating not just um, the season of Easter and the communion, since it's a first Sunday, but it will also be our first time celebrating Holy Humor Sunday. Um, and so we will key in on the joy of the gospel and the resurrection. If you have a good church joke to share, please send it along to the church office to be included in our publications for next weekend. We do need them by Wednesday, April the 3rd. Now, last week, we, um, we had a question. Um, she defined commitment when she said, don't urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you, Wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more so if even death separates me from you. This person, of course, was Ruth, here speaking to her mother-in-law, Naomi, before returning to Naomi's homeland. Now, why have we been going through all these the last several weeks? Well, we've been reviewing these few folks from human history who've changed the course of human events. And it is in the spirit of our Presbyterian heritage in the passage from Isaiah 1, verse 18, Come, let us reason together, that we prize education and expand our knowledge. 
Part of the purpose of Women's History Month is to pay attention to folks not typically mentioned in our average curriculum. As our neighborhoods change, our awareness and knowledge of our past must be more complete in order to address more completely our present and to better be God's servants. So thank you for your participation and thank you for remembering. Just thanks.